Hi guys, it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today's video I'm so excited about because I'm going to be recommending one of my favorite types of books. That's right, today's video is going to be centering cozy reading recommendations. Cozy reading books are some of my favorite and I love it as a subgenre even attached to other genres itself. So I do feel like I have quite a wide range of books to recommend today. But before we dive into the books themselves, first a word from this video's sponsor, which is GlassesUSA.com. I'm so excited to be partnering up with GlassesUSA.com for this video because I have been a longtime ambassador for their site for years. Every single pair of glasses you see me wear in my videos in my life are from this site. It's truly my favorite place to shop for glasses, but if you're not familiar, GlassesUSA.com is an online glasses retailer, and they have thousands upon thousands of different frames to choose from, from prescription glasses to sunglasses, from so many different styles and options. And because they're online, they're able to cut out the middleman, resulting in you being able to get a fantastic price for your frames, which I think is great. And with the holiday season upon us, it seems like the perfect time to treat yourself or even just take advantage of some of their incredible holiday deals and savings that they're running on their site. And because GlassesUSA.com is online, it's also incredibly convenient. Not only is everything sent directly to your door, but they also have super handy tools like the AR try-on tool, which allows you to see what the glasses look like on your face without even having to leave the comfort of your own home. And another thing I love about this site is that outside of having glasses and sunglasses, to shop for. They also have contact lenses and it's a great place to stock up and save across all of your favorite brands where you're able to save 25%, which I just think is amazing. And I of course have a very exclusive offer for you guys. If you click the link below, you'll be able to shop all of the frames I'm featuring today, but also have a special discount code that can be layered on top of any deal that's currently running on glassesusa.com. That's right, a double discount. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into my glasses haul. First, I have to take off my everyday pair of glasses, which are of course from Glasses USA, and put on one of my other faves, which is the Muse McNeil frame. And these are in a lovely green shade. I love this color. I think it's such a fun, but still very subtle pop of color. And with the fall winter season, I just feel like it matches perfectly with my wardrobe. Obviously no, I'm a big fan of the color green. My kitchen is literally green. So I just love how these frames just seamlessly blend into my life. And they're also a fantastic deal and come in a variety of other colors too. Just such a flattering shape and they're also super lightweight, which I love. Then the other pair of glasses I have to show off, I recently featured in a vlog and I have been loving wearing these this winter season. I just think they're so fun. Clay makes fun of me when I wear them, but I just don't think he gets it. I just think these are so cool and retro, but these are the box frame and they're also part of the Save the Tortoise collection, which is a super cool collection inspired by the beloved tortoise. With 10% of the proceeds from this collection actually being donated to the American Tortoise Rescue Organization, which I think is super cool. But there's something just so over the top about these frames paired with a chunky sweater that I just think is so fun and I love them and I love the shade of tortoise. They are just perfection. Alrighty friends, that is my Glasses USA haul. Again, I will have all of my frames linked down below as well as my super exclusive offer code, which again can be layered on top of any offer currently running on glassesusa.com. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive back into the book recommendations. Alrighty, as I said, I have lots of books that I feel like are perfect to cozy up with this winter. The first book I'm going to recommend is actually part of one of my favorite cozy subgenres, which is the cozy murder mystery story. Somehow these books are so heartwarming, but also kind of have that thriller component that keeps you flipping the pages and it feels like an oxymoron but it definitely works at least in my opinion. The first book I'm going to recommend is The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. And The Thursday Murder Club is actually the first book to a murder mystery series which provides a great opportunity to fall in love with characters and being able to meet them again and again in a new book. But this book actually is set in a very peaceful retirement community in the UK and we follow four unlikely friends Elizabeth, Joyce, Ibram, and Ron as they meet every single week in a club that they call the Thursday Murder Club, where they try to take on and solve unsolved murder mysteries. Lo and behold, one day this club gets to take on the opportunity of a lifetime, and that is to solve a real life murder case that happened on the very doorstep of their community. And everything sort of begins to spiral out of control from there. This book is very, very charming. First and foremost, it's a beautifully led character story. We get to know every single character, where they are now and their past. And so much of this book 
book is really an illustration of how society tends to leave the elderly behind. They begin to not take them as seriously, but in reality, every single character in this book is incredibly experienced, smart, and uses their own set of tricks to get exactly what they want. From information to confessions, you name it, you see them not only take on this mystery, but also try to circumnavigate the police in this area. I loved seeing them work together to outsmart people. I also loved seeing their relationships as friends and also again getting to know their own paths and also their connection with their families. This book is really like a perfect combination of heartwarming, delightful characters you will love so much with also a very compelling mystery at the heart of it. It was rather interesting to see how everything was going to come together by the end. I feel like this book was just super charming. I would also really recommend the audiobook for this. Um, I feel like the audiobook narrator did a fantastic job capturing all of the characters' personalities and their spirit within this book. It was just a lot of fun to read and I feel like a perfect combination of genres that I was not able to put down. Speaking of cozy murder mysteries, I actually have another one to recommend and that is Shady Hollow by Janu Black. This is another murder mystery taking place in a small community, but this time it is a woodland creature community. That's right, every character in this book is an adorable woodland creature living in a little town together and boy oh boy is it cute. But this story centers our main character Vera Vixen and she is a fox and also a reporter and investigator in this town. And at the beginning of the story, a well-known curmudgeonly individual is found dead within this community and everyone isn't sure if it's murder or not. And from there we watch Vera Vixen, our main character, take on the investigation of this crime. Again, this book really balances a lot of different things. It's very cute and very adorable. It has this like Gilmore Girls-esque community, but again, obviously it has this central mystery that's also tied to a murder that does sort of propel you through the plot. These sort of things I feel like should not make sense, but again, it somehow just works so much. A cozy murder mystery is just one of my favorite things, and this one is a lot of fun, and I love the sort of woodland creature element to it. It was just super cute. Next up, I have some cozy romance books to recommend. The first is Emily Wilde, Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. This book is just so much fun, and I feel like it combines the perfect balance of like romance, characterization, and a really compelling like fantasy plotline too. In this book, we're introduced to our main character, Emily Wilde, and she has been working her entire career to put together this encyclopedia documenting all the fairies as well as all the fairy lore across the land. At the beginning of this book, she is almost done with her research, but she just has to travel to one more faraway location to get the final stories to put within her encyclopedia. Emily Wilde herself is very skilled within her area of research, but she sort of struggles with everyday social connection. So when she arrives in this new town, she's struggling to get the answers she needs and to get the town to trust her. Unfortunately for her, her academic work rival also appears in this small town. He very much gives like Hal from Hal Moving Castle vibes. And in contrast to her, he is very charismatic and immediately the town warms up to him. They begin to work together to try to finish Emily's encyclopedia. But a set of very dangerous fairy related things begin to happen within the town itself. And Emily is pulled into this mystery. I really enjoyed this book for a variety of reasons. One, I feel like the romantic pacing was just so cute. I just feel like it was really thoughtfully done, especially considering this is going to be another series. I feel like the author really spent a lot of time developing the connection between our two main characters and really didn't rush things. I will say this book is not very steamy at all, but more so leans in the cute direction. And I just felt my heart swelling every single time our two main characters were on the same page. Their banter and back and forth is just so fun. On top of that, I loved the fantasy and fey elements of this book. The author really took a lot of time to build up this fantasy component and it definitely didn't feel like just thrown in for a sake of a background plot but instead a really meaty part of this book and I felt like it added such a great ambiance. Fae weirdness is just like one of my favorite things. Fae stories are one of my favorite things and I just loved the combination of all of the inputs of this book. It was a delightful read, it was an entertaining read, and I can't wait for book two. Next book I have to recommend is The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. This book made my heart burst. I was laughing, I was crying, 
crying, I was smiling my head off. This book has found family and romance and it will just delight you from page one. This book is set in the UK and in it we're introduced to our main character Mika Moon and Mika Moon is a witch and she has had to keep this fact a secret her entire life, resulting in her not really having too many close connections because she has to hide so much of herself. She does pass the time though by creating witch related content online, which is kind of funny. She's like hiding in plain sight, if you will. One day though, Mika Moon receives a very unexpected invitation and that is to basically become a tutor to three young witches who live in a very kind of remote location in the UK. Mika Moon has been taught her entire life that witches are not supposed to congregate with one another as it sort of accelerates and balloons their magic, making them more susceptible to be noticed by humans. But Mika Moon decides to take a chance travel here and teach these three young girls. From there, she enters a very interesting situation, not only teaching these three young girls, but interacting with the other adults that live on the property. This book, again, is so much found family, so much love, so much connection, so sweet. I loved the magical education part of this book, and I also loved the development of all the relationships within this book. And there are so many different types of relationships to fall in love with. It's romantic, it's charming, it will, delight you. I also listened to the audiobook of this and it was great. Um, but yeah, I like literally was crying while doing a puzzle reading this book because it just took over my heart. I fell in love. The next book I have to recommend is another fun, cute, cozy romance story that also has a bit of fantasy in it, and that is Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater, another Regency romance series, and each book actually centers a new romance and a new main character, which I also think is so much fun. Again, I wouldn't say these books are very steamy, but instead more cute and swoon-worthy. This story follows our main character, Dora, and from a young age, Dora has always sort of been different from everyone around her because she was also cursed at a young age where half her soul was basically taken into the Fae realm. As a result, of this, Dora kind of has a hard time connecting or socializing in a traditional sense, but she is incredibly close to her cousin who she's also determined to find the perfect match during the upcoming ball season. However, though, she sort of gets wrapped up in a mystery with the Lord Sorcerer, who is very grumpy, also not really interested in making any type of social connection, but they begin to not only work on this mystery, but also begin to grow closer to one another. And this book is just so Fun. Not only does it have all of the trappings of a Regency romance that just makes romance so fun, there's the dinners, there's the balls, there's the propriety, there's the silly little walks in the park. I personally love that setup, but it also has a really interesting like magical fae element too. It definitely is more of a lighter touch, but I do feel like it adds an interesting twist to the narrative overall. I really love Dora, our main character. I love how she is herself and she's not afraid to be herself. I love her connections with her family and those that she's close to and I love seeing her take on the very grumpy Lord Sorcerer and the development of their relationship. This book is just delightful and the sequel is delightful and I promise you if you're looking for a cozy Regency romance good time this is the series for you. The last set of books I think are all just beautifully written stories and have their own cozy elements to them. The first is Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. One of my favorite Brandon Sanderson books to date. One of my favorite books of the year. This book is full of so much whimsy and adventure. It absolutely blew me away and burrowed itself in my heart. It was just so fun. Brandon Sanderson describes this book as if The Princess Bride was written from Buttercup's point of view, and I feel like that is absolutely a perfect way to describe it. I love Tress and I love following her on this adventure that she went on. But in this story, we're introduced to our main character Tress and Tress lives on an island with her family. And for the most part, she's really, really happy. She's content with her life and she has no interest in leaving or exploring the wide world at all. But at the beginning of the story, something happens resulting in the love of her life basically being taken away in a very dangerous situation. And she decides to take it upon herself to save them. From there, Tress has to set out on the open sea. But in this world, the sea is not made of of water, but instead spores. And when spores come in contact with water, they basically spontaneously combust into like matter and depending on the color of the spore, different things happen, making like any type of travel very, very dangerous. Tress is joined on this adventure with an unlikely rat companion. Yes, you heard that correctly. You see her as she makes friends and comrades and take on a huge variety of obstacles along the way. This is so much like a coming of age story, a coming into power story, but Tress herself is just such a delightful main character because fundamentally she does not change the core of who she is. And seeing her journey is just a beautiful, delightful thing. And it was just 
fun. Like this felt like a fairy tale, like a story I wanna read over and over and over again. I loved this book. One of my favorite Brandon Sanderson books to date. It was just playful and cozy and delightful. I loved this story. The next book I have to recommend is probably the most emotional book I'm going to be recommending today, and it definitely has some trigger warnings I would implore you to check out, but ultimately the found family elements of this book will just make you want to weep from joy, and I loved the journey that this book took me on, and the book I'm talking about is Light from Uncommon Stars by Raika Aoki. This book in it itself is a very strange story. The inputs are very peculiar, but everything works and creates such a lovely tapestry of experience in this story we're following and reading from a variety of characters' point of views. The first character is Shizuka, and she has quite literally made a deal with the devil, and that deal is she has to deliver seven souls from seven violin prodigies to the devil, and she's already completed six. So she's on the hunt for her final soul, and that's when she comes across one of our other main characters, Katrina, who is a young transgender runaway, recently kicked out of her home by her family, and when Shizuka hears Katrina playing the violin in the park, she's immediately transported and falls in love with her music, and Shizuka from there takes Katrina in and becomes her music teacher. And the last main character we meet is Lon, and Shizuka and Lon meet by chance, and Lon is an alien from a faraway planet, and she and her family has settled on Earth and is now running a donut shop as they prepare for possibly the end of the world. The tapestry of experience that the author creates in this book is just a beautiful thing to read. I loved watching all these characters come together, understand each other, love each other, and I also loved how central music was within this book too. That coupled with the very quirky sci-fi elements added another interesting layer to the story and plot that I also feel like brought it to new heights. I just really enjoyed this book. I loved working to understand what motivated these characters. I loved understanding these characters in their hearts and I especially love seeing them come together, accept and appreciate each other as well. This book is just so beautiful. Again, one of my favorite books of last year. I think about this book often. I think about the characters often. It was just lovely. And then the last cozy book I'm going to recommend is A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. This is the first book to a short story collection. And oh my gosh, if you want something that's going to be a warm hug, you have to pick this book up, especially if you have a lot of dread about the end of the world. This book is set in kind of a post-apocalyptic society. Basically, humans and robots fought. And at the end of this conflict, they decided to live in peace, but also separate from one another. Humanity also decided to discard capitalism and instead focus on small communities, more about supporting and loving one another versus like endless capitalistic pursuits. Again, it sounds lovely. In the story, we're introduced to our main character, Dex, who is a tea monk. Their job is basically to travel from community to community, set up shop, which is to offer tea to the community, and also provide a safe space for people to express their thoughts and feelings. Dex really enjoys their job, but they're also feeling a little bit lost at the beginning of this book, and they're craving something more or something different, and they actually want to travel out into, into the unexplored wilderness. So they decide to do this. They pack up their wagon, and they set out into the forest unknown. There, Dex runs into a very unexpected individual who is a robot, and this robot named Mozcap is very interested in humans and also desires to sort of bridge the gap between these two groups once again, and they form the most unlikely, most delightful friendship. They begin to adventure together. They begin to support each other. There also is so much lovely dialogue of two people who don't know the other, don't really know their backgrounds, and just wanting to learn and love and provide the other a safe space to express themselves. It's just delightful. And just seeing Mozcap interact with Dex is hilarious. Seeing Mozcap interact with anyone is hilarious. The sequel, honestly, is even more delightful than the first one. It just has all of these inputs that will make you fall in love with the characters, the setting, the concept. It is, again, a warm hug and a story. Honestly, anytime I'm a little bit stressed out, I just kind of look and seek out this book. I'll read a few pages because it immediately puts a smile on my face and I adore it so much. Alrighty guys, those are my cozy book recommendations. Again, big shout out to this video sponsor, which is Glasses USA. And again, I will have a link to all of my glasses as well as my super exclusive offer code linked down below. Also, if you have any cozy reading faves, please let me know down below in the comments what they are as I'm constantly looking for new books to add to my TBR. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye!